we discussed GC in higher education, global citizenship in higher education, there are two major problems. The first one is a problem of leadership, and the second one is a problem of conceptualization. So, um, you know this lady quite well. Uh, if you believe you are a citizen of the world, you are a citizen of nowhere. You don't understand what the very word citizenship means, says Prime Minister Theresa May. And if you look at what Shuttle says about this declaration here, uh, it talks about extreme nationalism and the politics of patriotism. And it says, uh, perhaps a little bit more dangerous, the binary nature of the choice. You cannot be a citizen of your country and of the world you must choose. And the President of the United States in 2016, one of his biggest rally, said there is no global anthem, no global currency, no certificate of global citizenship. We pledge alliance to one flag, and the flag is the American flag. John Hunter, um, who works for the Center for Agri Education and Inter Internationalization in Italy, uh, analyzed both results from the May uh, declaration in this uh, well-known speeches, and she talks about a formal nativism which explicitly rejects the value of multiculturalism and internationalization, and by extension, the value of global citizenship. But still, if you look at the United States here, Japan, and in general in Europe, um, the United Nations uh, suggests that there is a kind of high percentage of citizens, of people that declare themselves citizens of the world, world citizens. So here, uh, this point ties in a way with how globalization is being interpreted um, in higher education in the last 10 years. We have a neoliberal approach where global citizen is someone who is a success, successful participant in a liberal economy driven by capitalism and technology. So here it's much more programmatically speaking related to internationally, how internationally uh, mobile is a student or how can be ready to be employable in a global society. And here the critique is that this notion of neoliberal approach might be connected to what he calls, Caruana calls, elite cosmopolitanism. There is this risk. And then related to the radical approach, um, we can see an approach, theoretically speaking, of Western imperial, the risk of Western imperialism uh, that uses economic power for domination. This is another aspect that is in a way related to how university or universities will then um, conceive their curricular implementation in terms of um, global citizenship. The critique here is that this approach, although strongly criticizing the Western imperialism, still is what it is said here as a dichotomized. So say it's global and rich democratic are the oppressors versus local and pure undemocratic oppressed. Whereas there is much more, it's much more complex. And finally, a third approach is the critical transformative approach. Um, perhaps the one which I recognize my uh, doctoral research a little bit more. There is an, an aspect of uh, interconnection between uh, this understanding and how we can transform this situation um, in terms of implementing principles of global citizenship within uh, universities. So, given all this uh, background, here is my doctoral research. The premise is universities worldwide commonly acknowledge the importance of GC, and obviously they recognize the importance 
of training global citizens, but in practice, how they going to implement this? What are the distinct pedagogical approaches to, of GC within identified university courses? What are the global competencies that universities are focusing on developing in their students? In terms of literature, we are looking at UNESCO, Oxfam, World Study, United Nations, and uh, the purpose of my study is to examine 20 to 25 universities, global citizenship programs and courses across Japan, the US, and the UK. Indeed, as I was anticipating at the very beginning, I'm based in Tokyo, Japan, so that obviously that is uh, an advantage because I'm, I can compare what's going on in Japan and the States. It's challenging, but also uh, rewarding um, to be able to uh, look from a different angle. Mine is a qualitative case study approach, so I will be focusing Although I'm starting with 20, 21, 25 universities, at the end of the day I will be uh, narrowing down with uh, probably four to six, six uh, case studies across the states, um, the UK and Japan. Etymology. Uh, Diogenes declared, I'm a citizen of the world, and without knowing it, he started uh, a mass movement called the Cosmopolitans. And then after Diogenes, the Stoicism, that declared every person belongs to two communities, the local community of their birth and the entire human community. And then he followed this Heraclitus and Stoic cosmopolitan, a cosmopolitanism um, that uh, suggests that individuals should regard themselves as concentric cycles. And with this, within these cycles, human beings feel a sense of affinity towards others, which the Stoics termed oikiosis, orientation, familiarization. So this is a very interesting part because it explains graphically uh, the meaning of cosmopolitanism and then as a result of global citizenship. So yourself, your family, fellow citizens, so within your local community, countrymen, it gets broader, and then mankind as a whole, therefore, global citizenship. Okay? So, what is a global citizen? Literally, cosmos means the entire known world, so global, and politics is a citizen, so global citizen. Kofi Annan, 2001 Nobel Peace Prize, suggests that of course, legally, no one could claim to be a global citizen, so it's not on paper. Uh, we don't have our ID as a British citizens or Italian citizens, and then our ID as a global citizens, although it would be a nice idea. But it's, uh, this is to say that it's more a uh, feeling, it's more a uh, sense of mission toward uh, the humanity as a whole. And then, according to Gaudelli, a global citizen is someone who is aware of the wider world, respects and values diversity, understands world affairs, is outraged by social injustice, and not to challenge injustice, contributes to the community at all levels, from the local to the global, and is willing to act to make the world a more sustainable place. Then we look at what the meaning of global competency. So when a learner is global competent, because here we are discussing a prospective curriculum in global citizenship, which is in a way the core of my doctoral research. And so Rimmers suggests that um, a learner is global competent when positively inclined towards cultural difference, when has an understanding of diverse civilization streams, when has an ability to see differences as opportunities, when develops an awareness of world history, climate, health, economics, and then finally, when improves capacity to speak, understand, and think in, in languages different from the first one. Um, one model that I've been using in my doctoral research is Hunter 2004, the global competence model. This is very interesting because it focuses on knowledge, skills, and attitude. So it starts from self-awareness, which is a point that is very interesting to me. Everything starts, in my opinion, and based on my teaching experience, I'm, te I'm a lecturer in one of the major university, public university in Japan, and I can clearly see that when my students are changing 
their approach uh, within themselves, then everything as a result goes much better. So this model starts from self-awareness, risk-taking, attentiveness to diversity, open-mindedness, and then it goes um, uh, external, external part of the cycle, global awareness, historical perspective, inter 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 intercultural capability, collaboration across culture. So according to Hunter, having an open mind while actively seeking to understand cultural norms and expectations of others and leveraging this gain knowledge to interact, communicate, and work effectively in diverse uh, environments, that's when actually we can tell whether or not our students are getting toward the direction of becoming uh, global competent. Obviously, we need to assess as well whether our students are global competent or not. So here, Hunter proposed this global competency checklist. Obviously, we don't have time to go through all the areas, but the attitudes part is an area I'm very interested in, because knowledge and skills has always been measured in a way or another, but the attitudes are very important. For example, a non-judgmental non reaction to cultural difference, openness to new experiences, and so on. Then I identified what I call attitude super five, not because it's identifying someone that is a superhero, but uh, because I believe are very important characteristics, humility, sensi sensitivity, intellectual curiosity, agility, and communication ad adaptability. These are all core areas I'm using in order to assess my students' efforts as well. Then obviously there are uh, some training methods and activities that you guys, I guess, know very well. These are the same, uh, but obviously um, we should try to identify some uh, ways. This is something that I'm researching on, on connecting these training methods and activities to the very concept of global citizenship. So to conclude, what is global citizenship education? It tries to encourage learners to analyze real life issues critically. Um, or it focuses on engagement in individual and collective actions to bring about changes, and then obviously involves multiple stakeholders and so on. Um, the problem is that most of the institutions are trying to repackage uh, traditional programs with new program name of global citizenship. So it's a kind of a marketing strategy. Um, in conclusion, I want to share with you quickly some of the themes that I identified uh, in order to avoid repackaging but trying to create a proper global competent curriculum. For example, responsibilities, emotional connection, written reflection, respect, civic engagement. This morning someone uh, was presenting on this point, respect, very important. Civic engagement global consciousness, active engagement, study abroad. These are all elements that would uh, potentially contribute to a global citizenship curriculum. Again, this is another very interesting model that I'm thinking to use in my doctoral research. Uh, this is an advanced effort to try to include what a potential uh, global education, global citizenship education curriculum might include. Uh, and there are four core areas, culture, environmental, integrity, human rights, and then rights, rules, and responsibility, and then sub um, uh, areas that could be considered when we're addressing a global citizenship curriculum. But it's also interesting to notice that here there is a cycle that includes students' awareness, knowledge and skills, actions, and um, effect on change. So this is a cycle that repeats because students first need to be uh, aware of certain issues and then they can get into these four core areas when they're learning a specific subject. In conclusion, Ban Ki-moon, who was the, the former United Nations Secretary General, clearly described the importance of, global, of fostering global citizenship, citizenship, citizenship by saying that education is about more than literacy and numeracy, is also about citizenry. Education must fully assume its essential role in helping people to forge more just peaceful and tolerant societies. Thank you very much. Thank you.